wireless engines. One breezy afternoon, Gordon the big engine drove to the harbour before taking his evening express. He was in a bad mood too, and wanted to be left alone. Bill and Ben, however, didn't count at all, and took the opportunity to give Gordon grace. The wind's picking up, Gordon. Better hold on to your dome, chuckled Bill. Gordon leered at the twins. He did not like to be reminded of the time that the wind caused his loose dome to come off while thundering across the viaduct. You can't trust Domus engines, they say, Ben added, grinning. Gordon was about to retort, but suddenly he thought of the perfect way to get the twins to leave. He knew that, though they thought they were clever, they were very gullible too. Perhaps you're right, said Gordon. I'm glad I have a dome, but I'm especially glad that I have a firebox and funnel. What, what do you mean? What kind of engine doesn't use a firebox or funnel? Bill asked. Diesels, for one, Gordon replied. But I'm not talking about diesels. I'm talking about a different kind of engine. My driver told me about them, but you wouldn't be interested in that sort of thing. This piques the twins' interest. Tell us! said Ben. And so Gorton started. Many years ago, on a faraway land, there existed a railway. It was like ours with a main line and branch lines. There were big engines and small engines. What the railway was particularly well known for was its industries. It exported goods across the world. The engines who worked in these factories were tank engines, much like you two. One day, the controller, to save money, decided to replace the tank engine with... something else. Gordon paused and gave an impressive dramatic sigh, as if petrified with fear, which had desired the effect on Bill and Ben, who were glued to Gordon's every word. What, 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 what happened? They are shivering. They say that these new engines weren't truly engines. They were mere shells of engines. They had no fireboxes and no funnels. The men who worked in the factory say that they look like ghosts and lifeless. Sailing across the yard without making a sound. The workmen, disturbed by their sight, pleaded with their control to bring the old engines back, but he would not listen. Many of the workers left, and soon the factories fell into disuse. But they say the ghost engines still roam the yards, slinking along day and night. A whistle shrieked from the other end of the yard. Bill and Ben nearly jumped off their wheels. They quivered as they heard the sounds of wheels creaking towards the side. It's, it's, it's the ghost engine! Bill and Ben cried. They stamped away at once. Gordon bellowed with laughter. The source of the noise had been Edward, who with plenty of steam had coasted across the harbour to the sidings. Where did the twins go off to in such a hurry, he asked. I just told them a ghost story to get them to leave me alone. Gordon said, tears in his eyes from laughing. But you really added the final dramatic flair with your whistle. Oh dear, I was hoping to catch them. There's a big shipment of China clay you. Well, I'm sure you'll find them hunkered in their shed. And Al Gordon was right. Sir Edward found the twins at the back of the engine shed at the station, still shaking. What's gotten into you two, asked Edward. If we're not careful, the ghost engine will get us. Ben cried. Ghost engines? The twins told Edward what Gordon had said. Edward smiled and as he realized what it was, the twins were really describing. Those aren't ghost engines, Edward laughed. Those are fireless engines. Fireless engines? Bill asked, they don't need firebox or funnels. Their boilers are filled with superheated steam, which allows their pistons to move like normal steam engines. They're used all over the mainland, and they're quite nice. 
Bill and Ben, realizing they were tricked, vowed to pay out Gordon the next time they met.